Hi guys, welcome to part 18 of my 2023 Christmas Village full tutorial series. Too many unfinished tasks. Let me try to reduce at least of one unit in that amount. In part 17, I've introduced you to my personal idea of a cloister garden in plain air. Cloister garden, not inside a monastery as they usually are. But it was, and it is still, very, very unwatchable. Missing one base part with just one Norse god statue, one Viking god statues, instead of four, plus many other props missing. I need to finish that cloister garden. In fact, I spent all the week 3D modeling the remaining three or three uh, Norse god statues. Be advised, not the usual Viking gods. Okay, some of them yes, some others not. And that is my personal vision of a Norse god, of a Viking gods. Mm, you are advised. So, a very big amount of work to do on the cloister garden. Then, then uh, someone told me once, why you never use decorated Christmas trees in your villages? I don't know why. Yes, I know why. And I will answer to that question in the next hours. Uh, but, I needed to amend myself, so I will also try to make, to build, after 3D modeling, my vision, my personal decorated Christmas tree, with a touch of electronics also, nothing complicated. Then, then I don't know if I will have uh, some more time. Yes, one last thing. In plain middle of the cloister garden, I have a free empty space. Mm, I don't like <laughs> to space, to free space to walk around. So I need something to put in the middle of the cloister garden. I don't want another statue, mm, Norse god statue. I don't want there a Christmas tree. No. Not even a decorated Christmas tree. So, I will try also to add something in the middle. Believe me, those are very long uh, tasks because I will need to finish them. And the cloister garden will not have some street lamps. I don't want to ruin the uh, ancient look of it, adding some uh, street lamps inside the cloister garden, I will add them around, outside the cloister garden. Too much speaking, let's go working. Well guys, Christmas villaging, besides everything else, is also painting and painting techniques, more or less. It all depends if you do by yourself some figurines, some statues, some buildings, or you just use uh, the, some painting techniques for your backgrounds, for your roads, or for changing the aspect of some Lamax figurines, for example. But at some point, you will need to paint something. Let's talk about a particular painting technique. Here I have the statue of uh, Thor that I've 3D modeled and 3D printed and that you have seen in part 17. Okay, guys, in part 17, it was just, uh, come out, it just came out from the 3D printer. Now it is primed in gray polyurethane uh, primer and then I've applied two coats, two layers of bronze. All this was done with the airbrush, guys. Okay. This is the result. But 
This is a brand new bronze statue. And I've always shown you a pure new bronze statue. Uh, but just to keep in mind that bronze statues will not remain that way forever. Bronze, that is an alloy of copper and tin, 88% copper, 12% tin, tend to oxidize. Oxidation. I will not do a chemistry lesson, don't worry. The most famous example of a bronze statue or a copper statue is Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty in New York. Everyone has present that statue that is completely green right now, but uh, that is a patina, guys. Oxidation. And the oxidation is called the patina, P-A-T-I-N-A. -A, or in painting techniques, verdigris. Verdigris, etymologically, the etymology of verdigris, let's say like that, is verdi and gris. Verdi is green, gris is grey, so a mixture between the green and the grey. Voila! But generally it's called patina. You know the oxidation, the process of oxidation of the um, iron, that is rust, that if not stopped, tend to corrode the iron and dismantle the aggregation of the molecules. So corrosion of the uh, iron, rust, tend to completely destroy uh, the iron. In this case, with bronze or copper, or pure copper, the oxidation, the process of oxidation, just is superficial. It just uh, cover the surface of whatever is in bronze, statues, uh, um, tools, etc. Little statues, little tools, but the corrosion will not be present. Okay? It's just some sort of protection of the surface. Little Parenthesis there. Normal patina, normal bronze patina, because if you are in presence of some chloride, it will corrode bronze, but it's very, very, very rare. So I don't speak about that. If you want to see some example of statues, I will put them right now on screen. Copyrighted pictures, obviously, so sorry for the watermarks. Good guys, so that is the effect I want on these brand new Thor bronze statue with all the details. Too shiny, too bronze, too new bronze. Uh, I will need to age this statue and then apply the patina effect, the verdigris effect. It is uh, layer after layer process, okay? And the verdigris, the patina, tend to be vertical because it's with water and oxidation, because water is part uh, hydrogen and part oxygen, enough with chemistry, and when the water flows down, it tends to make some path, okay? So I will try to follow that path 
with my statue. Too shiny. So it will require a very long time, step by step, because each layer I will apply need to set, need to dry before adding the next layer. First of all, uh, this painting need to be aged a little. I will use a wash. A wash is some paint, some painting colors, some acrylic colors mixed with water. More water than colors, than acrylic. I will do my wash. Not pure black, I will use a mix of uh, of uh, Brown, this is burn brown, okay, earth burn brown, and I will use some brown like this, a little more, let's say like that, then I will add some black also, just a little black. Then I will do, I will adjust the mix if it's not enough. Then some pure water. enough and then we wait for the first layer to dry before starting to talk about the patina the verdigris so let's wait for it to dry done for the first two layers guys this is the result after two layers of brown black wash brown plus black wash and obviously the shiny effects is much more reduced but we, during the final step you will understand that i will regain once again a little of shiny effect two layers of uh, wash one hour it took me to complete this okay one hour let's do some verdigree, some patina guys here. I will use my board there like that. Sorry, it is a used board and old. This is almost 30 years old. Yes, I think 30 years old. Plastic, pure plastic. What I will use guys, I will use a pre-shaded uh, paint. This is Verdin Verdigree, I hope you can see, from Game Color. Why I'm using this? Because this is especially meant to be a Verdigree for statues. Because those colors need to be chalky, very chalk, matte, pure matte and chalk. This is not a sponsor, guys, but this is absolutely what I use every time I want some patina, some verdigree. Maybe compared to the photos I've shown you briefly some minutes ago, 
too clear, but I like to give this a very degree. It's maybe too turquoise, too blue instead of a green, but the effect will be as good as I want. So, Verdigris from Game Color, it is a company that makes um, uh, paintings, uh, acrylic, and this is, this is acrylic for very small miniatures, okay? Not that big as the statue I want to paint or even Lemax, Limax figurines, but much more slow, smaller, three, four centimeters, three, between three and four centimeters uh, tall. Okay, so that's why they use such a uh, little container for the uh, miniatures, okay? And this can be found online, Amazon, eBay, everywhere you can find this uh, brand here. Europe, uh, US, uh, South America, Australia, everywhere you get this brand here. Game color, it is item 72. 0.096 I will proceed with my statue my little board some uh, very soft very soft brush okay a very soft brush much more softer than this one and I will mix this verdigris here, let's use it like that, but I will also add some water and I will explain why. So if I use this one, it is not a translucent, you can see from the board that it's chalky, yes, but not enough translucent, transparent, okay? If I use some water, like that, not enough, so I will add once more some water, Three more drops. This is a total of six drops of water. And uh, let's check these. Yes, it's more like that. So I will take my statue. And I will go vertically like that with this verdigris. Okay, then. I will not stop here, I will get some tissue, something white, something paper and then go vertically, because water tends to flow vertically and I will wipe out part of it in excess like that and then I will continue in another zone
Good. And I will do a very important final step, but once these are dried properly, okay? I will need to wait these to dry properly. Uh, you are not always satisfied with what you have achieved. You can always add some more, etc. I cannot insist too much on the thunder there because it's very thin. I risk to break it. But it's like that with such statues like that. And guys, this is not complete. One final last step is necessary. But you can understand and you can see how much it has changed its aspect. Now it's real uh, old bronze statue. Good. One hour later, guy. I think this is almost completely dried. Okay. One last step. Bronze. Pure bronze once again. And this time, very gentle, I will go with a dry brush. Uh, this time I will sit down because this is uh, somehow delicate. Let's try with the base. Okay guys, I think that the statue of Thor is done and with the, this last step adding the original uh, shiny uh, bronze paint it gives it the final look, the final look and you need to have some shiny spots like that. And this is how I want or the result you get with this technique of applying some patina. Uh, maybe not perfect, but guys, this is an aged bronze statue. <clears throat> Let's continue with something different. During the years, I never used in my villages a decorated Christmas tree. Oof. Why? I don't know. Maybe because I always used this, those little Christmas tree already decorated but very tiny, very short with, uh, with everything, with bowls, with uh, candy canes, with uh, presents, etc. This is from uh, Limax slash Lemax or Lemax slash Limax and it is very tiny. The other decorated Christmas visage I love to use is this one, guys, big, no, not big, bigger, 
uh, it's uh, somehow a rare item with those candles that doesn't light up the only things that light up is the star on top of it and it is old-fashioned because inside I can see <laughs> uh, old electronics inside and I connected this to an AC adapter in order to get it uh, lighted etc. So th those are the only two Christmas tree, decorated Christmas tree I've ever used. Of this one I have five or six but they are standard, not very effective. So let me try to amend myself. I 3D modeled and 3D printed this little guy here. It's not a tiny, it's not very, very tall, it's not short. It's average between figurines that are six centimeters. Oops, uh, six centimeters. So from here to there, and this is a 16 centimeters, so 10 more centimeters. Uh, not as tall as some of my buildings, but it can be usable. And I modeled a very strange geometry. Big spaces, uh, as it was, oops, um, overlapped, everything was as overlapping, so first layer, then a very big space in here, another big space in here, and so on, level after level. Why? Because I wanted to decorate it, and if I have a simply one piece with no space for me to add something, I can't decorate it. Uh, I've 3D modeled, 3D printed, primed, in um, polyuretanic primer and then one simple shade of green airbrushed from there i will add something let me bring something very strange i modeled and printed this maybe on black is better this little thing here uh unconceivable uh, not quite immediately uh, recognizable, okay? But if I clean this, if I clean everything, I get this little thing here. And now you will recognize what those are. Bowls, Christmas bowls, connected with some very tiny filament so it's it will be a hell not to break anything and those little decoration there can fit like that okay like that on the Christmas tree. So you are not, it's not mandatory to use some pre-assembled Christmas tree. With this model you can go with whatever you want and assemble it as you want. I have done multiples of this one because one simple circle there will not fit all along. But I will also add uh, some flashing micro LED, but it's for later. Let me proceed to green. So I will add some white, okay? Some white here and there. Good, let me have some white like that. Then a brush and I will go with some white
Good, for now I will stop here. Okay, and with white, it has already changed its aspect, okay. And while this dry a little more, I will try to paint those little things there, those little balls there. Good, I will do a mess, I know, but right now I must decide from where to start, top or bottom, I think I will go from the bottom. Good. This process and this part is done, I think. I will put away some of the colors. While these dry a little bit. Let me get to the scene. This little thing here. Here I have 85 micro LED, okay, 85 micro LED, and this is a little PCB, a little board, I haven't made it, this is something you find already, let me get inside those boxes here, okay, combination in wave, sequential, slow glow, chasing flash, then slow fade, the twinkle flash, steady on and off. And this is a box for three AA 1.5 volt batteries that I have eliminated like that. Instead, because I don't want to provide all along the season some batteries inside that. And this is more conceivable than the, this big box. Let me connect 
positive and negative and if I switch on you can have oops like that and then first like that then second one then third one fourth one fifth one sixth seven eight and then switch off so 85 LED too much I think a little too much but first thing I need to undo everything here because it is a mess right now Okay, let's do an experiment. I will cut the last one. It still work, okay? I will keep those because maybe I will use them. So I have too many LEDs, okay, 85 is too many. Okay, so I will do a 
this. And guys, this is how it works with the decorations and obviously I, I went all around so but then I will undo the mess with the LEDs working okay green red blue and white or purple or what else whatever okay guys so this is my Christmas tree now let's work a little on the cloister garden I have painted some of it not entirely finished but I will assemble this before continuing Before adding the statues and something in the middle, this should be it. But the trees I modeled, that the trees like that, I don't like them like that. So I will modify them, I will get some glue, PVC glue. Then a brush. Let's say like that. Then, then, then. Then I will get some moss. Fourth color done, then now I will need to add some more mix of water and, and the PVC glue to get this a little more stable. Good, here I have a mix of water and PVC glue.
I will add something strange. Okay, here I have some small leaves. Okay, some very small leaves. And I will try to get the scene more interesting, okay? I will wait for this to dry, but I miss something here. I will not use a big tree there, I will not use a big statue. I think I will use a little fountain there. Not real fountain, not working, not functional with real flowing water because I don't have the space to place a pump. Well guys, the fountain. I modeled and printed this little girl here. It is somehow Viking, somehow Nordic and in order to celebrate one of the aspects I made air with, uh, with some beer and then a barrel of beer and then everything will go inside. But I painted it, primed, then gray, then black, then green, then brown, okay? But I need to fill in with some water. I don't want to use some long setting epoxy um, glue I will use my standard five minutes epoxy glue sorry guys I had a little problem with the camera but let's recap what I did I mixed some component A and some component B two spoons of each and then added some blue pigment to get inside. After five minutes, it has hardened, as you can see now. This little thing here that you see, this little wire here, is nothing more than some fishing wire that I will use to guide some more resin that will go inside the fountain, okay? I repeat the same process I did previously.
and it's like that the fountain for the cloister garden final recap of part 18 of the 2023 series and obviously i'm focusing it on the cloister garden on the finished cloister garden two male norse gods two female norse goddess viking gods viking goddess even from an higher view you have watched me painting adding the patina the very degree to tour statue there even from the side guys and now that he is a properly aged bronze statue next to him is sif s i f i modeled her sitting on the ground somehow touching the ground there because she was the norse goddess of the earth not earth as a planet but earth as a soil and she needed to touch the earth and she also needed to have some wheat on her hand she's nothing else than thor's wife and she was judged the most beautiful woman the most beautiful goddess of all the time that's why i tried to give her some soft look lineaments some sort of the face because she knew she is a right goddess simply because she is the wife of Thor behind the Sif is Odin the father of all Norse gods sitting on his throne and guys his throne is simply piece of wood because uh, it didn't have, have to prove anything so he knew he was the father of all the gods an important throne was nothing for him with his spear and then two birds those are not eagles those are not oaks but they are crows Odin was also the god of death and the crows are the birds of death one sitting on his right hand the other one as you want taking off or landing on his shoulder and this is the aged version of his statue okay next to odin is freya <laughs> guys freya was also for a little time wife of odin but he betrayed him i'm not here to teach you a lesson about uh, freya but she was somehow sorry for the term addicted to success so <laughs> she had an affair with everyone with every being with every god that she loved she was an informant informatic I, I don't know uh, she was sex addicted so that's why she is so <laughs> so curvy okay guys i modeled her there with some big cats they are not cats they are lynx because her chariot was trained by those two links and on, the, on her shoulder some cloak that are nothing else than some oak wings so very powerful goddess also uh, I try to model her not with uh, the same soft uh, expressions of lineaments as Sif by the way Freya is F R E Y A okay Freya uh, with her links and uh, somehow a little nude because of uh, her character okay but she is also she has also a threatening uh, face okay 
that's why I modeled her like that Freya uh, I repeat I'm not here to have a, to have a lesson on uh, Norse uh, gods but Freya betrayed Odino never betray Odino okay and Odin sorry not Odino Odin and she also got all the magic powers from Odin so maybe he, she hasn't her place here but everyone have maybe expected to see Loki the antagonist of Odin and also of Thor here but uh, an evil god as everyone knows him but instead she is the evil goddess the fountain guys not bronze this is modeled to be somehow a stone uh, fountain and the result with the pouring sorry i had a problem with the battery when i was pouring inside but i simply mixed uh, component a component b and some um, blue pigment and then uh, poured it inside uh, but it is the the same process you have seen me using on the uh, water from the barrel to the uh, to the fountain uh, itself and that is my vision of a fountain of a viking fountain with the lady being a viking lady maybe a bartender of the time the trees guys they are still drying and with the leaf there the rocks the leaf um, the hedgerows etc and this is the complete maybe I can have someone sitting on the bench and someone walking towards the gods like that I will need to add some more figurines but street lamps will be outside around the cloister garden but <laughs> I wait for your comments guys is this a good looking cloister garden finished cloister garden I still need to clean a little more and the PVC glue needed to become more transparent etc but this is my cloister garden then guys i also started the painting and the chapel there uh, with some gray two shades of gray dark and a light gray then some yellowish uh, and everything has been done with the airbrush still need to paint the lamps there and to hide the wires but <laughs> the the cloister garden took so much hours to complete painting everything adding and you have just seen a, uh, a little part of the process not the entire painting process but you have seen a new technique I've never shown you the patina effect then guys the <clears throat> Christmas tree the decorated Christmas tree guys and I will go like that and this is my decorated Christmas tree with simple bowls <laughs> and then also my LED okay um, I will go with these effects uh, randomly from one effect to the other uh, you have uh, eight effects okay chasing glowing etc uh, alternate etc uh, and compared to the figurines guys uh, let wh where is the companion where is she i've lost her no she's there sorry guys I will take her and put her there 
so the dimension is quite good like that guys so the dimension is proper okay even with some more figurines still need to paint her but from the other side okay guys not gigantic as the buildings but this is my decorated christmas tree uh, up to you to tell me once again if it is a decent result i will need to find a way to place it somewhere and then hide all the wires and have the switch uh, reachable in some somewhere okay guys and everything else is untouched because uh, you know mod each each statue took me 12 hours to model maybe this one 10 but Odin 15 hours to model it is a complex statue and the fray also 12 hours so <laughs> two entire days just for the statue and <laughs> the fountain a little less six hours to model etc and guys that's all one task completed in just two parts never seen before guys i will switch immediately to the other camera sorry passing through because and i'm here guys hello guys very late as always and the cloister garden from that point of view guys this is the cloister garden with the four horse gods and then the chapel also will be maybe too dark but i don't think so because it will be surrounded by some snow and that is old so i still need to add some white here and there and it will change the aspect once again and then you can see here the little tree it's not there because here i know too many parts since i've uh, started this task here but i will complete it by next part 19 with so many more tasks be completed this was very long guys the cloister garden and the christmas tree decorated for the first time passing through to close this part 18 and just that yes just that please don't forget to subscribe comment and give big thumbs up thank you for watching thank you for bearing my usual unbearable english and see you for part 19 but only if you really want bye guys